To Pipe, baseball means everything. He believes there is no better feeling than picking up a bat and hitting the ball high into the sky. Pipe dreams of playing baseball in front of millions of people one day. But there's one problem. Pipe is a me. Even more worrying, Pipe has never played Wii Sports in his life. He was banned from the Wii as a kid as he forgot to tighten his wrist strap. Instead, Pipe has had to train his whole life in the Mii Plaza, hoping that one day he will get his big break. And although his dream seems distant, his journey may finally have begun, because Pipe has just signed for his first ever baseball team, the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers. The Stoke-on-Trent steamers have long been described as a relic of a forgotten age. They've been kicking around since the olden days of Wii Sports Baseball, 2006 to be exact. However, as the years have gone by, the steamers have really let off the gas, and they now find themselves as least favourites to win the annual Wii Sports Baseball World Cup. The winners of this cup will receive the highest honour any athlete has ever received, the coveted golden Nintendo Wii. It is Pipe's dream to get his hands on this monumental prize, possibly even a golden nunchuck as well. <laughs> You're thinking, no chance, but with this team, this year, he might just have a shot. Let me introduce you to the boys. Captain, Engine Room. The heart and soul of the team, Engine Room embodies everything it means to be a Stoke-on-Trent steamer. Passion, hard work, determination, and a very strange looking face. He may not be the best batter, but his leadership skills are almost passable, and that's why he gets in the team. Tactician, Mind Brain. A descendant of Alan Turing, Sherlock Holmes, and Professor Layton, Mind Brain is the sharpest me in the game. Some say he won three seasons of University Challenge all by himself, but that's not true because he never went to university. Mind Brain can predict his opponent's moves so far ahead that by the time they actually perform the move, he's forgotten what it was. With Mind Brain around, the Stoke-on-Trent steamers will always have the tactical advantage. Batting Specialist – Barn Owl Abandoned in the woods as a child, Barn Owl was raised by a family of Barn Owls. As a result, he has razor-sharp sensors, expert precision, and eats mice. Batting Specialist – Scalene Winner of the World's Strongest Woman 2012 Scalene has the right arm of Popeye and the left arm of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Wild Card – Xavier Xavier is an unknown quantity. Some days he's brilliant, some days terrible. The only thing consistent with Xavier is his hordes of adoring fans and his obnoxious theme song. Bowling specialist, Pipe. First name Pipe, second name Dream. After performing exceptionally well in county trials, he's the newest member of the team with a whole lot to prove. He's noticeable by his yellow beanie, which rumour has it is actually sewed to his head. Fielding specialist, Smaug. Hailing from the Lonely Mountain, Smaug has taken a break from hoarding gold to become one of the safest hands in modern baseball. Fielding specialist, Cardboard. One of the most boring me's ever created. Batting specialist, Wrinkles. Wrinkles is Engine Room's granddad. He's also blind, which isn't great for baseball. Fielding specialist, Spindle. A fine catch who is only ever let down by her persistent lockjaw. Cursed with a mouth that can never be closed, Spindle uses this to her advantage to intimidate her opponents. And then there's Venus. With the team assembled, it was time to travel to the home of Wii Sports Baseball. Uh, the baseball tab on the, on the Wii Sports home menu. And with the press of a button, the team arrived in Baseball City. Oh boy, coach, we're in the big city. I'm not the coach, I'm the captain, but yes, we're in the big city. Wow, it's so big. Wow, it's really big. Uh, and it's a city. Stop sightseeing, we're here to play baseball, damn it! And just like that, the whole team was fired up for their first match. Here's how the tournament would work. 
Four groups of six will each compete in a mini league. The top four of each will go through to the knockout stages, which will entail a round of 16, quarter final, semi final, and grand final. As he prepared for the first game, Pipe dreamed of competing on the biggest of stages. But if he was going to get there, he and the team would need to negotiate their way through the group stage. And they wanted a big start against their first opposition Brown Town. Famous for its prominence in the game of Monopoly, Brown Town is situated right in the centre of a swamp. Brown Town's captain Jesse was certainly not to be messed with. And what's more, after performing so well in team trials, Pipe found himself as the opening batter. He was shaking with nerves. This was the big moment, his first ever professional hit. The ball came towards him, and... A foul ball, not a bad start, decent height on it. Pipe felt himself filling with confidence. But then... You're out. It couldn't have been a worse start. Pipe was out on his second ever hit. But there was no time to think about it. The game would carry on whether he liked it or not. And thankfully, the ever-reliable Captain Engine Room was in next to get the situation back on track. And he did so with great success. Foul. Oh god no, things are really not going as planned. The team were demoralised, and they couldn't even get a single. But it's often said that in times of need, the greatest of us step up. Engine Room is one of those greats. With this first run on the board, the team were in ecstatic spirits, and spurred on by this good mood, star batter Scalene stepped up and smashed the ball long for a double. The crowd went absolutely wild, but they weren't cheering for Scalene. As good as her double was, no. Xavier had just stepped onto the field. The chanting was deafening, even after Xavier sliced his first three shots. At which point, Xavier became bored with the attention and decided to hit a simple grass cutter, which resulted in a single. Seeing as he was so popular, Xavier was a tough act to follow, and Spindle, mouth gaping open as usual, was struggling to handle the pressure. Thankfully, after briefly getting a bat stuck inside of her own head, she also managed to single, meaning the Stoke-on-Trent steamers were now two to the good. Smaug was up next, hoping to continue this golden streak, but she hit it straight into the ground and was caught out. With this, the steamers were only one mistake away from the end of their first innings, and up next was Engine Room's blind granddad. Wrinkles. Oh god no. Not being able to see the ball, Wrinkles began to swing wildly, hoping that by pure chance he might make some contact. As you could guess, this technique didn't work, and he was struck out. The sides changed positions, and it was finally time for Pipe to redeem himself. He was now standing in his favourite position on the baseball pitch. Pitcher. His first pitch was straight and true, arrowing past Jessie before she even had time to think about it. His second had much the same effect, and the third was so powerful all Jessie could do was spoon it up into the air. The next thing everyone knew, Jessie, Browntown's star player, had been struck out by none other than Pipe. In stepped Abby, hoping to do better than her captain, but Pipe had other ideas, and he began to absolutely bring the sauce, striking her out too. Looks like you're next, Kentaro. Ha ha ha, bold of you to think you have a chance. Take this, Kentaro, take this- Oh. 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 At this moment, Pipe snapped out of his overconfidence. He knew that if he was to make up for his shambolic batting performance, he would have to take this a bit more seriously. And after Matt hit his shot too straight, Pipe dove down to his right and scooped it up to end Browntown's first innings. Now the steamers could flex their batting muscles once more, and it was Barn Owl who kicked things off with a sweet double. double. Unfortunately, at this point, it was Mind Brain's turn. Oh god, he's not gonna do his usual thing, is he? Okay, if I just position myself here... Oh no, here he goes. Wind speed is 2 kilometers an hour. Temperature is a mild 15 degrees Celsius. The sun is angled at an 80 degree angle to the horizon, which means if I turn my bad two fractions counterclockwise, then... No, I have to adjust the polarity by 14 decibels. Curses, I was one percentile out. With this, the team had done one full rotation, and Pipe found himself needing to bat again. Just as nervous as the first time, he tried to steady his hands as best he could. And then, something magical happened. Pipe had really hit the ball. And not just hit it, he'd backed himself his first double, meaning the steamers scored yet another run. 
brimming with pride in his new teammate, Engine Room followed suit, and Pipe was able to experience the feeling of reaching home base for the first time in his life. At this point, the Stoke-on-Trent steamers were really flying, as star batter Scalene used her massive arms to thunder the ball up into the air and out for another home run, making the score 6-1. Fangirls and boys worldwide held their breath as even Xavier nearly hit a home run for himself. Spindle hit a single and then, as with all good things, Smaug and Wrinkles made sure the innings came to an end. The steamer's first match continued in high spirits, as Pipe sent bowl after bowl streaking past the Browntown team. Even Wrinkles, although having no idea where the ball was, managed to make a catch. By the third innings, they were still 6-2 up, and after a cheeky single from Barn Owl, it was once again Mind Brain's turn. Even he couldn't mess this game up. Wind speed, 2 km an hour. Pulse, regular. Calculating trajectory of 120 degrees northwest. Carry the two, make sure to accommodate for the missing percentile, and with careful cushioning reactionary force of 0.7 newtons. Single. Hmm, good. Pipe walked into the batting area once more, this time knowing he would hit the ball. And, putting all his effort into the swing, he sent the ball skimming across the grass, managing to bag himself a very impressive triple, scoring the Stoke-on-Trent steamers another two runs. Ooh, up steps engine room as reliable as ever. No worries, at least we have star batter Scalene next, that should be fine. The pressure now fell on Xavier, and despite the sheer volume of the crowd, Xavier was blocking them out. For although they held a considerable lead, one more out, and their final innings of the first game was over. Xavier breathed deeply, and listened to his own theme tune playing in his head. With that, he swung. Single. Oh. My god. Well, it doesn't matter how you score them, the steamers were still in. What followed for Brown Town was borderline cruel. Spindle with a double, and then Smaug with a beautiful home run. And at 12-2 up, nobody even cared about Wrinkle's blind swinging. The game was practically won, and another fine bowling innings from Pipe sealed the deal. The Stoke-on-Trent steamers had won their first game by 12 runs to 2. Once the pandemonium of celebrations had calmed down, that evening, the steamers went back to the baseball field to practice for tomorrow's game. But when they turned up, they found a harrowing sight. Tomorrow's opponents, the Salmon Fishers, were already there. And on top of this, they were demanding a practice match. Engine Room accepted with great enthusiasm. Not only would this be a chance to learn how the opposition play, but the steamers were on a high at the moment, and giving the Salmon Fishers a good thumping now would help with morale tomorrow. The stage was set. Everyone took their positions, and the practice match began. The leader of the Salmon Fishers and their best pitcher, James, was rumoured to be one of the tournament's biggest wild cards, and as Pipe faced up against him, he soon found out why. Expecting an extremely fast ball, Pipe swiped early to make sure he hit it. However, James had actually pitched the ball incredibly slowly, and instead of smashing it into the stands, Pipe found himself being caught out. Could James really have pitched this badly on purpose? And it wasn't just Pipe who was having problems either. Scalene uncharacteristically hit her shot straight to the opposition fielder. Barn Owl only managed a single. And then there was Venus. Double. But Smaug also found herself caught out. By the end of the first innings, the Stoke-on-Trent steamers had no runs. Pipe would have to put in one hell of a pitching performance. Not letting James's bad pitching distract him, he decided to pitch the only way he knew how. Hard, fast, and straight. But Pipe was finding pretty mixed success. It seemed, although some couldn't deal with his extreme power, some batters weren't troubled in the slightest. And it was only thanks to a lucky catch which fell straight into Wrinkle's hands before he even realised that the steamers were only one down going into the second innings. Thankfully, the Stoke-on-Trent steamers did have one player that provided a thorn in pitcher James's side. And that player was Wrinkle's. As Wrinkle's tactic so far had been to continually swipe in the hope that he times his batting correctly, James's slow balls increased Wrinkle's chances of success. But just as the ball began to travel towards him, Wrinkle's realised something very strange. Although he couldn't see the ball, it was moving so slowly 
that he could sense it. Wrinkles recalled his time as a young samurai. His sensei had once made him perform a drill in which he had to chop moving logs with his eyes closed. He'd had to picture the log in his mind using all of his samurai senses. And now those senses were kicking back in. Finally, with the help of some questionable fielding, Wrinkles scored a single. Spindle stepped up next in a state of disbelief at what had just happened. Not that you'd be able to tell she was in disbelief as her mouth is always open. In all her years of playing baseball for the steamers, Engine Room's granddad had never once hit a ball. And imitating his technique, she too tried her hardest to sense the ball. It worked! A home run! And with the rest of the team starting to hone their senses too, Cardboard was able to hit a home run as well. And then, it was Pipe's turn. Following Wrinkle's advice, he frowned hard, imagining the ball coming towards him. As with the others, he made a connection, and the ball soared into the air for Pipe's first home run. And then there's Venus. You're out. The only player who wasn't quite playing along with Wrinkle's tactic was Mind Brain, who was still attempting to calculate the perfect shot. Judging on previous events, it seems there's a 90% chance this is a slow pitch. That means if I subtract n from the inverse of the improper fraction, then carry the 2... You're out! Curses, I forgot to square root. And, after being distracted by a small rodent on the pitch, Barn Owl was also caught out, ending the team's second innings. The steamers had managed to amass a substantial lead. However, the team were now beginning to get fatigued and started to make some stupid mistakes. It was only thanks to Pipe's brilliant pitching that they went into the third innings still ahead. By this time, it seemed James had become frustrated with the steamer's ability to sense his slow pitches. But instead of reverting to fastballs, he seemed to decide to pitch even slower. These pitches were so slow that even Wrinkles, with his samurai senses, was struggling to tell where they would land. It almost felt as if the ball would drop out of the sky before it reached the players. The steamers were caught out, and the final innings of the game began with more bad news. No matter how fast Pipe bowled, they seemed to have figured him out. It turns out if you pitch the ball fast and straight every single time, the other team will figure out that you're pitching the ball fast and straight. The scoreline was now four apiece. Were they really going to lose? What did this mean for tomorrow? It didn't bode very well. Pipe thought hard. Was there anything he could do? Something new he could try? And then came a shout from the bench. It was engine room. Pipe, switch it up a bit. And suddenly, it all made sense. He would try pitching slow like James, but he wouldn't just match him, he would pitch even slower. He imagined it in his head, the ball dropping out of the air before it reached the player. And almost completely by accident, Pipe mastered a type of pitch known as the splitter. Although this pitch was technically not legal, it was so deceptive that the opposition were tricked into swinging. Had they not swung, Pipe might have been penalised. But as it was, he was able to salvage the game and the practice match ended in a tie. Morning broke the next day, and there was an air of nerves about the team. One thing was for sure. This time, they would not underestimate the salmon fishers. Once again, Pipe was first up, and this time, it counted. Sense the ball, Pipe. Sense the ball. Bang! Relief melted over him like an ice cream on a hot day. He had managed to hit the ball, and with that, the rest of the game went perfectly. Barn Owl used his supersonic hearing and hit a huge home run. Then Scalene got a double, and so did the newly reinvigorated Wrinkles. Smaug hit a smart single, and then there's Venus. The only letdowns were Xavier, who was busy working on his improved theme tune in his head, and Mind Brain, who managed to miss the ball entirely. Curses, I forgot Pythagoras' theorem. No worries, the Stoke-on-Trent steamers were 6-0 up, and Pipe now had a new pitching technique to employ. Perfect. He would give James a taste of his own medicine. Wait, what? Pipe tried again, but James wasn't swinging. Being a slow pitcher himself, James had seen through Pipe's disguise. And by the time the fourth pitch landed, Pipe had given away a free single. You're a fraud, said James as he skipped merrily to the first base. It was here that Pipe realised something. Sure, the splitter was a useful weapon in his arsenal, but he wasn't a slow pitcher. He'd always dreamed of being the fastest pitcher the world had ever seen. What was he to do? Engine Room's words echoed around in his head. Pipe, switch it up a bit. That's it. 
The key to good pitching isn't being fast or being slow, it's all about variation. Without another thought, Pipe began to unleash hell. A no ball, one strike, two strikes, a catch, and another strike out. Pipe was so informed that the referee declared a mercy rule. The Salmon Fishers had been defeated, and the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers had their second win of the competition. But they weren't done for the day. They still had one more match to go. And when they found out who they were against, it wiped the smiles off almost all of their faces. The next match was against the Steamers' top rivals. A team captained by a player who haunted the memories of Engine Room and every other one of the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers. A player so good they actually renamed the whole club after her. Would the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers really be up to the task of taking on Lucia's baseball team?